This is delicious chutney, and I never would have thought the jackfruit chutney would be this good. Hey guys, welcome back to the fermentation adventure. Today we are going on an adventure to the tropics, and we are taking this crazy looking dinosaur egg <laughs> called a jackfruit, and we're gonna show you how to cut it open, and we're gonna make something really special with it. And we really debated what we should make with this jackfruit, because there's so many things you can make with it. Plus, it's really good eaten by itself, just raw. But because we love fermentation, we decided on jackfruit chutney. Hey guys, welcome to the fermentation adventure. We are Paul and Sarah. Join us on this journey to explore the world of fermentation. If you'd like to learn how to make ferments like these, start now by clicking subscribe and hitting that bell so you don't miss a thing. So check this thing out. This jackfruit in front of me weighs a little over 18 pounds. Believe it or not, this actually grows on a tree. You see the stem there? That is insane. And it kind of grows off of the trunk. It looks like a big old knob right on the trunk. I guess picture like a watermelon growing on a tree and you're not too far away from that. So this grows on a tree called the jack tree. And jack trees, believe it or not, can produce 100 to 200 of these per year. So that's like two, three tons of food, which is insane. And you can eat almost the entire thing. Actually, we planted a jackfruit tree from a seed. We planted this jack tree about seven years ago. Well, we don't have fruit yet, but we still hope. Want to give it a big hug? Give it a little love. Maybe it'll grow better. Mwah! <laughs> and this jackfruit comes from the tropics. Well, it could be South Florida, it could be the Caribbean, it could be South Pacific, California, really anywhere that's warm enough. In fact, we actually picked this up at our local grocery store because it's actually getting more popular. And it was only 99 cents a pound. Crazy. I thought it was a steal. The last time we had jackfruit, we actually went all the way down to Homestead, Florida. So say you're shopping for a jackfruit and you find it maybe in your Asian market, maybe if you're lucky enough in your grocery store, or maybe somewhere far away down in the tropics, to tell if this is actually ready yet, you would look at the color first. If it's a bright green, that means it's a young jackfruit and it's not ready. That's actually the perfect time to ferment it. If you were going to try putting jackfruit in some brine, uh, that would be the perfect time. Another way you can tell if it's ready is just take a smell of it. Oh my gosh. It's crazy. It smells like bubble gum. Tell if it's ready to cut open is the spots. So say it's starting to turn a little bit darker of a color, it's not so green, and you start to see these little brown areas on it, and then you press on it and it's just a little bit soft. It has a little bit of give. It is ready. Now there are a couple different ways to cut a jackfruit, but we're gonna show you the best way to get all of the fruit and all of the flesh and everything out of it so you can use the entire thing. But first, we have to coat the knives with a little bit of oil. We like to use coconut oil. And the reason we're doing this is because it is very sticky in here. Especially the center part, there's a lot of sap and it is unbelievably sticky. It's very difficult to it's get like off your fingers. industrial glue. Yes. Most people, I would say, just coat their hands with oil as well. But we're gonna go a step further. We're gonna use gloves. All right, here we go. The knife that you pick, you might want a really long one so you can get into the center of it. You gotta put a little bit of force into it. Okay, we've made our cut down one side of it. Now we're gonna flip it over. We're gonna continue that line. Now, this has really big seeds inside, so you might actually hit a seed here and there. Okay, we got our two halves here. Wow. That's amazing. Oh, look at that. Look how beautiful that looks. Beautiful. <gasps> I can smell it. It really does smell like bubble gum. Look at that, that's the hard core. You can see the sap forming right there. This stuff is seriously sticky glue. You can see the three different types of fruit that makes up the jackfruit. So we've got the seeds. It's surrounded by a yellow pod. Sweet, really delicious good. fruit eat by yourself. And you can see the stringy stuff. That stuff is actually edible, but most people don't even talk about it and they just throw it out. So let's get a little farther into this. We're gonna cut it lengthwise one more time to make it easier to get into the fruit. 
core is not edible. So since we have it in a quarter piece, it's gonna be easier to slice out the core. And you can see as we're cutting this that we're gonna have a lot of waste. So we have our compost bowl. We're also going to have our pulled pork or sloppy jack bowl. We're gonna have our fruit pods, very fruity bowl, and we're gonna have the seed bowl. So as we cut this up, we're going to divide it into the different bowls. Oh. A lot of people kind of do this with it, be a little easier to take off the pods. Look at that. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah, it looks like these just pull right out now. Did you know a jackfruit tree can live about 600 years? I did not know that one. Oh, look at this beautiful jackfruit. If you guys could smell this right now, it's amazing. I can see how it would definitely be easier not to collect these little stringy parts, but this is really good pulled jackfruit. Okay, I'm gonna go in with a knife on the rest of this one over here. Boy. One of these days we're gonna be done preparing this thing. Phew! We just got done. That was a long process. Took us about 45 minutes to an hour just to cut up all of this jackfruit. We had so much fruit we had to get an extra bowl. I think we hit the jackpot like we said because we don't normally have this much fruit from one jackfruit. So we hit the jackpot on the jackfruit. Uh, <laughs> uh. That's awesome. And for this video though, we're making fermented chutney. So the part of the jackfruit that we're going to use is actually the fruit part. This is the part that you can eat raw and it's wonderful as it is, but you might as well ferment some of it too. I mean, we have a lot and we don't want it to go bad. So with fermented chutney, it's gonna be delicious on all kinds of meals. So we'll be able to have it last for months in the fridge. It's gonna be amazing flavor. Okay, after all of that work of dividing up that jackfruit, we are ready to make our jackfruit chutney. Chutney is usually a mix of some veggies and some fruit. And you'll usually find it at Indian restaurants where you might have mango chutney and onion chutney. And so this one's gonna have an amazing flavor using jackfruit. A lot of chutney recipes call for vinegar, but since we're using lacto-fermentation, we're actually going to use our own culture, which is these lacto-fermented peppers. We're actually gonna use the brine from this so this is a previous batch that we made before and it was so delicious. It, it was a little bit tangy, it was a little bit spicy, so I think that's gonna mm. lend the flavor very well to the jackfruit chutney. So this is a way to jumpstart our culture within our chutney. You can actually use a number of different types of starter cultures, anything that you may have in the fridge. For this recipe of jackfruit chutney, we are making one mason jar. Okay, to get started, we need three cups of fruit. So it could be chopped, kind of diced. You just want it to be in chunks. We're putting all the ingredients into a bowl so we can mix it up really well. Next, to get that oniony flavor that we like in chutney, we're using a red onion. We're using a half of one. This red onion is gonna give it a little bit of color and add that little bit of spiciness in there too. Into big chunks, then we can stick in a food processor and pulse it. Doesn't that have like, oh, oh, these onions. Oh, they're strong. <laughs> it gets her every time. Next, we have two garlic cloves and one tablespoon of minced ginger. Lactobacilli bacteria along with yeast in there. But on top of that, there's a lot of really good flavor in ginger. And so we're gonna put them in the food processor and that'll help get them minced as quickly as possible. Look at that beautiful color, wow. Speaking of color, the next ingredient in the recipe is sweet red pepper. We're gonna put four of them. So this will add some really beautiful pops of red in the finished chutney. It's gonna add even more sweetness to it. Add those peppers into the bowl. Yes. So we need to juice this beautiful lemon, get two tablespoons. And really this is more for flavor than anything. I mean, it adds a little bit of the, the acid in there. Next, we have to put in some spices. Ooh, that's definitely Indian. We have one teaspoon of salt. We're gonna put one teaspoon of the curry powder as well. It's gonna give, oh, an amazing flavor with the jackfruit. A so we're gonna spicy. put- Spicy. Yes. Yeah. All right, so let's put in our starter culture so we can start it on the fermentation process. The bacteria and yeast could be on the bottom there, so you yes. want to make sure it's mixed up really well. And we're just going to take three tablespoons of the starter culture. We're going to make sure we stir it up because we want all of that starter culture to be incorporated. We want it to go to work right away. Okay, we've done about as much work as we can do today, and now we're going to let the fermentation take over and do the rest of the work for us. 
So we're just going to put it into a mason jar and use a funnel. We'll follow it all along the way and see what each day is going to look like. All right, so now that we have it into the jar, we're going to pack it in as tight as possible. Now you can either use a spoon like she's doing, or you can switch to something called a pounder. It's more for sauerkraut. We want a non-aerobic fermentation. So we want to get rid of as much air as possible. So with this pounder, it really gets a lot of surface area and kind of squeezes it down there. But the nice thing with this recipe is you're actually not worried about starting a culture all over. You actually already used a culture where we have a culture in there. So it's going to go ahead and do the work. You don't have to take as much precaution as you normally do. We're going to put an airlock on top and we have these special silicone fermentation lids. So all this is, is just a thin little layer there and it has a little nipple that when the air pressure comes out, it just lets a little bit of the gas escape. Now this isn't really necessary. You could just put a lid on top. This is just an extra bit of insurance, just an extra bit of safety for the top. We take our ring, screw it on. So now we're going to leave this on the counter. We're going to leave it there for approximately two to four days. You're just going to leave it there and let it do its thing. We'll show you what it looks like when it's ready so you know when you make this when it's ready to eat. And for all the tools that we're using, we'll put all the links below. So be sure to check those out. It has been 24 hours. Let's check out the results. So far, it looks like there's not much activity, but it's really beautiful in color. And I think we're gonna come back tomorrow and see what's going on. Might see some bubbles then. All right, guys, it's been two full days. Let's take a look and see what's happening. There are a lot of bubbles in here. Whoa, that has a really strong smell. Oh. So good. And since there's a lot of bubbles in there, I wanna push it back down and get the air kind of out of there. So I'm just gonna use my fork and push it down. Because there's a lot of bubbles, we're pretty close, but I think we're gonna give it at least one or two more days. Okay, we are back after three full days of fermenting. Our jackfruit chutney, I think is almost ready to go. We're gonna have a taste test and see what it's like. But first, a little visual inspection. You can see there's a little bit of separation there. We started with a starter culture, so it didn't take as long as what it normally would have taken. It normally would have taken maybe almost a week to get a natural fermentation started, but since we started with the culture, it sped it along. So when you look in here, there's a lot of bubbles going on. Quite an active fermentation. There's lots of bubbles everywhere. Ooh, that is strong. It smells a little Whoa. tangy. You can smell those Indian flavors for sure. You can smell the vinegar. So we're gonna give that a little bit of a stir to get all the flavor all together. As I'm stirring this, I can hear the air pockets. Normally when we're doing some kind of fermentation like this, we wanna keep everything below the brine. But with this one, we had an airlock and we also had an active fermentation that we started into it. So it wasn't as important as if you're doing it from scratch. All right, I think we're ready for the taste test. <laughs> Jackfruit chutney, here we come. All right, here we go. Whoa. Whoa! That's got a kick! For me, I taste the sweetness right away. It hits me right away, the, the sugary sweetness of the jackfruit. And I think for me, the ginger and the garlic hit me immediately, and then I tasted the sweetness of the jackfruit. This is gonna be like a really good condiment on really any dish. Yeah, if you wanna add something spicy and something sweet, this might even go good on like a sausage dog, maybe. I know, I'm thinking about that now. Hmm. Definitely Indian dishes. So <laughs> I would say rice and lentils, rice and garbanzos, yes. chana masala. Oh my gosh. So now after three days, we've decided it's good to go. We can put it in the fridge. What we're gonna do is replace this top with a regular top and we're gonna put the date on it, even though it's not gonna last very long because it just tastes so good. <laughs> So guys, if you like this, be sure to subscribe. It helps us out a ton. Give us a like and get out there and create some culture. Yeah.